welcome back to my channel Kuluruvane. So I'll continue with the array spray list. So today's question is finding longest subarray with some k. So this is what the question looks like. So let's take an example here. The given example here is 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 5 comma 6 comma 7 comma 8. Okay. And the sum of the subarray that we should look for is 16. So uh, the output should be the length of the longest subarray which will sum up to the given sum. So here the length of the longest subarray is 2 comma 3 comma 5 comma 6 which sums up to 16. So that is the question for us. Fine. The question is clear, right? So yeah. Now coming down to the intuitional approach that we should uh, frame for this question is simple. First is use two loops and iterate all possible subarrays of the array and check if the subarray sum is equals to k and keep also track of the length of the subarray and at the end return the length of the longest subarray. Okay, so let me write down that approach so that will be clear. Approach one that is use two loops and iterate all possible subarrays. Okay, so let me name this as approach one. And here the input will be integers array and and sum and the data type would be we can take it as list of entry yeah. okay fine so now this is the fu uh, function I have created to solve this first approach the basic three things that we need here is the length of the subarray and the starting index of that subarray and ending index of the subarray okay so let me name three variables that is largest subarray okay so here I will one second so here I can say yes largest subarray length okay so let's initially make it this as zero and here largest start index and let's initialize it as the minus one and also largest in index fine so these are the three variables i have created now let's start iterating the given input array okay so for iterating the subarray i'll use one more loop inside the ith loop so here we will iterate till end of this array so here i will take subarray yes so i will slice array from where to where from this is just i until j plus one okay so now what we will do this will give us the subarray from the range indices i to j plus 1. So I will directly calculate the sum of that subarray and see if that is equal to given sum. Given sum. Okay. If that is equal to given sum, I will calculate length of that subarray by calculating the difference between the jth index and the ith index and adding one since the array index starts from zero okay now i will compare this length if this length is greater than largest subarray length then straight away i'll go ahead and replace the largest subarray length 
with the current length okay and also the largest start index is i and largest end index okay will be j fine so this would give us the largest sub array length with the given sum and we can keep track of the largest start index and largest end index finally once we are done what we check is if largest sub array length what we check is is equal to minus 1 okay what we do is I just written empty integers array or okay let's make this written type as simple array so that we can okay and here also I will initially make this as the minus 1 sorry let's sorry mistaken here not the length we will just check the start index I mean start index and end index if both are in 1 minus 1 that means we did not find any sub array with that sum right else else what we will do is we will return nums dot slice array from largest start index until largest end index plus one okay this would give us the sub array which resulted into the the given sum and which is the longest so far this is the approach one that would give the solution for our question fine so now coming down to the time complexity since we are using two for loops to go through all the possible sub arrays this would mount to order of n square okay and coming down to the space complexity since i am just using temporary variables to keep track of the length start index and n index and other just temporary variables the order of uh, space would be order of one okay fine so this was approach one so well is there any other way that we could come up with so we can uh, bring up the efficiency in times of time or space complexity well uh, yeah there is uh, what we could do is we could use the two pointers approach and find our required sub array with the given sum okay so let me start writing down that approach approach two okay using two pointers and let me name this as approach two and let me scroll this up okay approach two and the uh, parameters remain same and uh, written type also remains same but the only thing difference here is i will keep track of the sum and i will keep track of start index and end index which acts as a two pointers and the remaining variables would be same that is this so let me take this let me take this and use the here fine so what this is now we have defined what variables we need for this and okay fine so what we do is I will traverse using I will traverse using the the end pointer fine so what I will do is initially I will start adding the some variable with the current element I am at now to check for sub arrays what I will check is if this is greater than the so let me name this as k so that it won't be confused with our temporary variable so if this is greater than the sub array sum we are trying to find and also check if 
the left pointer is not reaching out of the bounds from the end that is it's not to the right of the end pointer what we do is we just subtract some from some we just subtract nums of start from the sum variable right and also keep incrementing the start variable this in this way so next once we are done like this uh, what i'll do is i'll just check if this given sum is equals to k or not yes so if that sum is equals to the the required sum what do, do what do we do is we finally find uh, calculate the length of that uh, subarray and check if that length is greater than the max length we have if it is we'll store this length into max length right so let me calculate that length that length would be end minus start right so we check if that length is greater than largest subarray length so we'll straight away go ahead and store that value into this and also update largest start index to start and the largest end index to end right so this was the and this this was the way to capture our subarray length and the subarray start index and end index and to keep traversing the till the end of the array we have to keep incrementing the end variable and finally what do we return is we return simple we return if same longest start sorry largest start index equals to equals to minus one we return empty integer else we return the subarray subarray from start index until largest end index plus one right so this would give us our required answer using two pointers so this is our approach to for this given question now coming down to the time and space complexity what i would say is time would be just order of n since we are traversing array once and the space complexity is order of one since we are using just temporary variables to keep track of the length and start index and index and other pointer start and end other than that we are not using any extra space so this would mount to the order of one fine so this was approach two right now coming down to other approach apart from the above two we have written yes there is using hash map we could achieve this solution as well right so let me write down that approach using hash map okay so let me name this as approach 3 and uh, just a second so let me name this as approach 3 oh my god so and return type would be same as the above functions the only thing difference here is we need to use the hash map right to keep that would be mapping of sum to the index okay so let me take that hash map it is mutable map of int So initially we will just just a second initially we will have like this that is zero sum is pointing to the I mean sum to index mapping right so there is nothing of this kind so we will have like this minus one right so the other things is same where sum equals to zero and uh, 
where start one second this one yeah largest sub array is zero and largest start index is minus one and largest end index is minus one right this is the variables which we need to find our required answer now what we do is we just traverse the given array and check for our required answer so finally what we do is we just keep adding the nums of i into that and check if given hash map contains that sum minus k so this would give us the indication that there is a sub array with the given sum so with this we can have the start index start index is nothing but hash map of sum minus k and right so the length would be i minus start okay okay what is this okay so let me guess not null so yeah this would be length so what do we check here is if length is greater than largest sub array i will directly update largest sub array one second largest sub array to this one okay and we'll also update start index to start and largest end index to this one the element we are at okay since it starts from zero we this would be our start index right this one else what do we do if that hash map did not contain that sum this is that i mean this it did not contain that sum we just mark that sum to that index right so this one would be this index simple right and finally at the end once we are done traversing at the, uh, the given input array what we do is we just return c in the above functions if largest start index is equals to equals to minus one so we just return empty array else we just return the slice array from the from the largest start index until largest start end index plus one right okay so this is it so this is the third approach which would give us the required answer so now coming down to the time and space complexity the time is just order of n since we're traversing the array once and uh, space complexity now this would increase because we are using one extra hash map which would re result into the order of n space at most since the size would be order of n okay so these are the three approaches for this question now let me write the main function and compare the output of each approaches and see if they are mounting to the same output or not okay so let me write this this and here is we will just create that simple example which i have just shown here we'll use the same example so that it will be clear for us i'll use here same example and uh, store the result i'm sorry and also i should create an object of the above class i have shown you so it is longest separate some k okay now i will store each approach as a result and then print each of them and compare okay so let me 
call respective functions okay in sum is 16 and uh, i'll just print approach one like this and then now iterate that array and uh, print that respective element and do the same for approach two and approach three as well okay and let's see this one this one so i just have to rename them approach 2 this is approach 3 and this is approach 3 approach 3 yeah yes so now let's execute and check what their results look like okay yeah as we see okay let me print line as well so that the output will be on different line okay so let's execute now so as we see the output of approach one approach two and approach three are same which is two three five six that is what we exactly expected yeah that is it for this video thank you so much for your love and support keep watching my channel there will be a lot more exciting content coming up your way thank you